After launching SOLIDWORKS, you can click on the New Document icon and choose the first option, labeled Part. After clicking OK, SOLIDWORKS' default user interface will show you an isometric view of the three planes we talked about in the previous video, link below. The planes themselves won't be visible by default, but you can show or hide them and 30 other options by going to the eye icon on the top of the workspace. To show what these icons do and to learn how to control the viewpoints within SOLIDWORKS, let's open a simple part first. We will learn how parts like these are made in the next video, but for now, let's not worry on how this specific part was generated. You can see the Cartesian origin of the part as tiny blue axes. If there's something you're seeing in your model that you would like to hide, all the controls will be found when you click on the drop-down menu of that icon too. So let's get rid of the origins by going into the eye drop-down and clicking on Origins. Now let's see what the main three mouse buttons do. In this view, we can use the left click to select lines, edges, or planes directly on the part itself, or you can select features, for example the base rectangular prism, or sketches, for example a circle used to create a circular cut, if you use the left click on the list found on the left pane, called Feature Manager Design Tree. The right click will give you a drop-down menu with some options that we will cover as we go throughout the course. Of course, depending on where you click, these options will be different. If you click on an empty space, you'll see some options that mostly have to do with what you're seeing on screen, like zooming in and out, panning the camera, or changing the perspective. If you right-click on a surface or part, you'll get options specific to that element, including some of the most commonly used features, which will save you some time instead of looking for whatever that specific function is within the command manager. For example, you can use the chamfer option from here, instead of going to the Features tab, then clicking on the drop-down menu for Fillet and finding the chamfer function. But more about those functions later. Lastly, the scroll wheel will allow you to rotate, move, and zoom into and out of the part. If you press and hold on it, moving the mouse will allow you to rotate the part. Scrolling down and up will allow you to zoom in and zoom out, respectively. Notice that the screen will try to zoom into the location of the mouse pointer. So for example, the zooming center will be different if the mouse cursor is on the beta while we scroll down to zoom in than if we go back out by scrolling up and now locate the mouse cursor over the word lectures as we zoom in by scrolling down. Holding down both the scroll wheel and the shift key can also zoom in and out as you move the mouse without having to worry about where the mouse pointer is located. And finally, holding down the scroll wheel and the control key will allow you to pan around the image up, down, left, and right. Now let's look at some of the icons on top of the workspace. The first three are pretty self-explanatory. We have zoom to fit, so we can go out, press zoom to fit, we can zoom in, press zoom to fit, we can move the camera, and press zoom to fit again, and we can also use the F key instead of clicking this icon. For example, we zoom out, pan the camera, and just press F. Next we have Zoom to Area, which allows us to select the frame that we want to zoom into. For example, the word less, or if we go back out, the first lambda letter on the top. The third icon is the Previous View, which allows us to go back to the previous view 1, 2, 3, 4, for as many times as we want. We can press F again to fit to screen. We'll learn more about section view in a later video, link below, but it basically shows us what the part would look like if we cut it with a knife at different locations. We'll learn how to use this later. Dynamic annotations will make visible only the dimensions that are perpendicular to the view. For example, you see the dimensions of the sketches that are found on the top view? If dynamic annotations is on, we will only see those dimensions when our camera is almost perpendicular to that top view. The view orientation icon will show you different points of view for your part, for example the top view which we now see the annotations of because dynamic annotations is still active, or for example the front view, or if you want to go back to that default view, the isometric view. 
we can even look at our part from a point of view that is perpendicular to a surface. For example, the 45 degree chamfer surface above the less boring lectures embossed text. We would select this surface and then go to the view orientation icon and select the normal to view icon. This view is a minus 45 degree angle perspective that is perpendicular to a positive 45 degree angle surface. This will be important for when we want to sketch a feature on a slanted surface, but more on that later. Now, we will not be using this icon much since SolidWorks has default hotkeys for them. For example, we press Ctrl-1 for the front view, Ctrl-4 for the side view, Ctrl-5 for the top view, which still has those annotations, Ctrl-7 for the isometric view, and even Ctrl-8 for the normal view to the selected surface. For example, we click on that surface and press Ctrl-8. Let's keep the isometric view for now. The display style icon lets you see your geometry shaded with edges, just like we're seeing it now, shaded only for a more realistic view without those black edges everywhere, just the outline without the hidden lines, with hidden lines, or the entire wireframe, which is basically the outlines with completely transparent surfaces. We usually keep the shaded with edges as our default view while working on a part. The eye icon, which has a drop-down menu button called Show Hide Items, allows you to show or hide the different elements of the geometry, like for example, where the origin is located, like we did at the beginning of this video, the geometry's principal planes, or general annotations. We'll learn more about editing the appearance later, which is the sphere with the pencil on it, the Apply Scene icon allows us to change the background or surroundings of our part, including the overall lighting and even the reflection properties of the floor. And finally, the View Settings icon will allow you to play with shadows, ambient occlusion, which is the lower light areas effect around the internal corners of a geometry that tries to mimic how light bouncing around doesn't reach those areas as often, cartoon to give it a more cartoony look, and perspective, which we will use when learning more about photo views rendering. Now, to finalize this lecture, we'll see how to make SolidWorks load slightly faster. First of all, we'll go to this triangular icon next to the SolidWorks logo on the top left, revealing the menu dropdowns, and since we'll be using them rather often, and it really doesn't make the user interface substantially more cluttered, we'll click on the pin so that those six menus are always showing. Then under the Tools drop-down menu, we will find and click on Add-ins, and in that new window, we will deselect practically everything that is currently selected to launch at startup. You might have fewer or more items in this list, but whatever the case, since we will not be using all of those add-ins every single time we use SolidWorks, it makes sense to not want to have to wait a minute until our computer gets them all ready to go every time we launch SolidWorks. In the next video, we will create our first part based on its part drawings, and with it, we will start learning about all of those other icons you see on the top for both the features and the sketch tabs, so make sure to check out the link to that video in the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.